I have a bunch of these uh, very simple uh, Halloween lights. So uh, it's uh, powered by two 1.5 volts batteries, so that's three volts. And uh, there is a single uh, switch here that simply turns this thing on, so nothing fancy here. So uh, let's see uh, if we can use uh, some of these things uh, with uh, a microcontroller. So the first thing that I did, I uh, cut those wires. So let's check if uh, anything happens to this power supply. I expect not. So I've turned it on and yes, 3.2 volts. So uh, yeah, nothing special going on here. Uh, also, let's see uh, about the current. Okay, so I've uh, coupled those two wires here. It's currently turned on. So let's see uh, what current draw we have. So it's about uh, 70 milliamps. Okay. And another test. Uh, let's see if uh, these are uh, light bulbs or LEDs. So I'm going to try to connect to them the other way around. If uh, these are light bulbs, they will turn on. If they are LEDs, uh, nothing happens. Okay, so these are LEDs. I have also uh, opened this up. So uh, as you can see, there is nothing fancy here. It's just uh, the batteries and uh, this uh, switch so there is no uh, additional resistor or anything else so I'm guessing uh, this number of uh, LEDs here and this long wire uh, should provide uh, enough uh, resistance so uh, let's see uh, how uh, we can plug this into the microcontroller board. So this is how the lights look like. I have uh, connected uh, two of them. So this one with uh, the hands and this one with uh, the spiders. Uh, I have here the PyPico microcontroller board. I have here a button and I have here the seven segments display. So I've programmed a number of um, different patterns and you can switch between them uh, using this uh, button. So for example, uh, with uh, this first pattern zero, uh, everything is turned off. If I press the button, then uh, everything is turned on. Uh, then pattern two, we have both lights blinking with pattern three uh, there is uh, an alternation between uh, hands and uh, spiders and uh, well of course you can uh, continue to expand on the patterns uh, right now if I go to the next one it's simply off and then uh, back uh, first one second third let me see if I can uh, turn off the light so uh, you can see a bit better. So let's take a quick look at this diagram. So uh, I have here the PICO controller board. I have here uh, the seven segments display uh, connected through this resistor to ground. Uh, this corresponds to this and this resistor. 
uh, and as you can see the segments are connected to GPIO pins um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. The decimal point is uh, not connected. Then uh, on this uh, right side of the board, so this side here, uh, I have uh, the button connected to GPIO pin 16. Okay, so this uh, lower pin here is connected to this wire to the button and the button then is connected to ground and then uh, the next two GPIO pins uh, 17 18 uh, are connected uh, to these uh, lights uh, I have represented the, in, in the diagram only as a single LED but uh, it, it's uh, this entire um, set of uh, lights and uh, each one uh, is connected to ground uh, via uh, resistors so these resistors here and these are 220 ohms uh, resistors okay so um, yeah this is uh, what's uh, resulting Let's take a look at the code now. So first, uh, I have a number of files here for uh, interfacing with the seven segments display, with the button, and uh, I have this file here uh, called the LED, which uh, can interface with a specific uh, file, uh, with a specific LED or uh, with uh, those lights so let's have a quick look at uh, this one so I have here an uh, LED init, an LED on, an LED off these are very simple functions the LED init uh, simply initializes the GPIO pin uh, sets the direction uh, LED on uh, activates the GPIO pin and that off uh, deactivates the GPIO pin. So it's a very simple implementation. Now uh, I will take a look at this uh, main file uh, and then we can go through the other files but I already have a couple of videos uh, covering the seven segments display, the button so I will go uh, very quickly over this one. But uh, for the main part, uh, first I initialize the seven segments display, I initialize the button, uh, I initialize the two lights. I'm uh, showing uh, the selected pattern, which initially is zero. Uh, both lights are turned off and then uh, I have a cycle here, I also have a variable here inside the cycle and uh, what happens here uh, when uh, the program is entering the cycle, I'm first checking if the button is pressed, uh, if it's uh, pressed uh, then uh, the pattern is incremented I allow up to nine patterns because uh, that's all the numbers that can be displayed on the seven segments display. Uh, and I'm uh, showing this number. Uh, finally, I'm uh, actually uh, showing the pattern uh, on the lights. And I'm uh, calling this one here and not uh, here uh, because uh, as you saw, I have one pattern where the lights are uh, blinking so even if the button is not pressed uh, something uh, should happen in this uh, show pattern uh, function and let's take a look at the show pattern function it's here so I have uh, for zero or anything that's not implemented I have a default branch here which simply turns everything off then uh, for pattern one uh, all the lights are 
on, so lead on, lead on. Uh, for pattern two, uh, there is a blinking, a simultaneous blinking, so uh, the lights are either both on or both off. And for pattern three, uh, there is an alternate uh, blinking, and for uh, uh, five uh, of the cycles, uh, the first one is on, the second one is off, and then uh, the reverse is true, and the first one is off, the second one is on. And uh, this uh, cycle uh, variable is um, uh, incremented every 100 milliseconds, so we have uh, 10 uh, increments of the cycle variable per second. Uh, well, that's rough estimate, uh, so... Uh, we'll have here uh, half uh, of the second is uh, one uh, turned on and the other half, the other one is turned off. So that's it. And uh, it's uh, possible to add uh, up to nine uh, of these uh, patterns. So there's still room to add additional patterns. And of course, you can uh, add more lights and you simply need to specify what happens on uh, each of these uh, patterns. So now let's take a very quick look at uh, the seven segments uh, display integration. So I have here uh, first the initialization where I'm uh, sending the pin segments and uh, you saw this uh, implementation this, uh, call here where I'm sending an array uh, of uh, elements and I'm specifying for each segment the GPIO pin to which uh, it is connected. So this is simply stored here and uh, they are initialized and the direction is set. Then uh, there is a clear uh, function where uh, all the pin segments that are not minus one, so uh, all that are uh, assigned to a GPIO pin are uh, set to zero, so basically it's turned off. And uh, I have here a function to activate a specific segment. Again, I'm checking first if uh, that segment is indeed connected uh, to a GPIO pin. If so, it's set to true. And then I have uh, this function here that shows a number by activating multiple segments depending on the number. Yeah, so, for example, for one, this is the easiest one, uh, there are two segments that are activated. So, it simply calls uh, show segment. Uh, similarly, for the button, uh, we have uh, two functions one that initializes the button, and again, it's uh, GPIO initialization, set direction. Uh, with uh, optional uh, pull-up, which uh, simulates a uh, resistor. So you don't need to actually connect an external resistor. Uh, and uh, this is pressed function, which uh, basically reads the value and, uh, again, uh, checks if the button is connected to the ground or not and returns the value opposite of the value that's being so um, that's all for the code. Hope it's clear. I will leave a link in the description for, for my other videos uh, if you need to learn more about uh, these functions for the seven segments display and the button. So I hope you enjoyed this video, in which case don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, see you next time and have a spooky Halloween.